Okay, this is just to show you an overview of the X32 console here at uh, Calvary Baptist in Lake Havasu. The, the console is, it has 32 inputs, 16 outputs, and plus a bunch of submaster section in here that we can program all of that to do anything that we want. And I'm going to kind of just go through some of the overview of how you make things work. The first thing is once you power it up, it will come up with whatever the last mix position was that you left it in. Okay, there is some scene memories that will be able to be saved away in here. We have a default on scene one that you can always go right over here to the scene view right here. And it says CBLH default. If everything goes wacko and things aren't the way you want, you just go in there and, and just recall that scene. Just say go. You have it highlighted, you hit the go button, it'll go and grab the scene. All right? Should never have to do that, but just in case, it's there. Um, let's start with the way, the way the console is set up. The key thing to remember is you have all your inputs here, the submasters are here. And the function on the inputs, this is your hot channel. Okay, in other words, whatever green light you have selected here, that is what we call the active channel and you'll see that all these functions move in accordance with what I've got selected here. If I select a vocal mic you'll see that the, the gain, the compressor, if there's a gate, the equalizer, the aux sends, and the panning and everything are all right here. So this is like the channel strip that's active at that time and instead of having that duplicated with 10 gazillion knobs you just select which one is the active channel strip that you have showing up here on the top. Okay. The next section over here is your submaster section. We have it set up and it's all color coded with labels on everything with uh, uh, an icon and the text that relate to what it is. Like this is vocal 1, vocal 2, vocal 3, vocal 4. Now you'll see that the color code there also corresponds to the submaster, which is called vocals over here. So if I were, if I wanted to raise and lower my vocal mix, I can do it from here as opposed to raising and lowering all these faders here. You can do it either way, but this is a handy way to kind of do some, after you've done your sound check and you want to do some fine mixing and stuff like that, you can do it from here. Okay, same thing goes for the keys. The keys, they're color coded here. This is keyboard one, keyboard two. The guitars, I have an acoustic guitar, two electric guitars, and then the drums are in red. I have the drums over here. We have the ability to add some more drum mics, and then the bass guitar I also put with the drums because usually those move together. All right, in addition to those submasters for the band mix, we've taken and assigned the, the remaining submasters to be used kind of as God channels, like Chad's. Uh, in ear, uh, Chad's uh, E6 mic is always right here for you so that no matter what page you're on here you always have access to Chad's Chad's mic right here. Same thing with uh, the computer so instead of actually diving down into the computer page and grabbing the computer you can just grab it from here you can mute it you can change the level of it. Also for the CD and the iPad that's right here on this one too. Okay then we have the early bird service. The early bird service uses a couple of different microphones sometimes. We have the acoustic piano and the choir mics. So those are on the second page. But I don't have to go to that second page to access them. I can grab them right here and change the level on the piano and the choir mics right from here if I like and then mute it from here. Uh, there's some effects that are available. Let's talk about that and then we'll go on to the monitors. The effects are that we have assigned. We have multiple ones available. We've assigned two. We have a, a reverb and a delay unit that are both stereo in there. They would be, they show up as our master levels on buses 14 and 15. You don't even have to really worry about that though. They're kind of preset there. How you set them on the inputs is where you'd go over to your channel strip over here all right and say we're working on Jesse's vocal mic if I grab Jesse's vocal mic 
and I know that 14 is my reverb, so this is, I select 13, 14, 15, 16 on the aux sense here. If I go to 14 right here, um, this is 14. If I raise and lower that, I'm going to raise and lower the amount of reverb that Jesse's mic's going to get. If I do it on 15, it's going to raise and lower the amount of delay, digital delay that we have on his vocal mic. Okay? That's on a per channel basis. So you'll see if I go next door to the acoustic guitar, I don't have any delay because I don't want to clutter up his strumming. But I do have a little bit of reverb on there. Okay? So we kind of set those up. Um, you might want to put a little bit on the snare. So let's go in there and do that now. I haven't done that yet, so we'll just kind of raise it up a little bit. But we'll do that in the sound check and kind of check that out. But mostly we're going to be using that on the vocals, uh, on some of that stuff like that. Uh, those effects are available to you, though. That's how you get access to them. Just remember, select uh, aux, the last aux group, 13 through 16, and then delay is 14. I mean, reverb is 14, delay is 15. Okay, let's see, where else can we go? Let's go to monitors. Monitors. We have the ability to send five monitor sets here. Right now, currently, there's only three that are assigned on the stage now. Monitor one is Jesse's monitor. Monitor two goes to the vocalist up front, and monitor three is the backline monitor for the drummer. Okay? Now, any one of these inputs can be sent to those monitor mixes. A cool way to look at what you've got sent to the monitor mixes is this button right here. It says sends on fader. If I select with the green button this monitor mix that I want to look at and I hit sends on fader, the function of these fader positions now are showing me the level of whatever channel is assigned to that monitor. So in this case we're looking at Jesse's monitor. I have his vocal, the most predominant thing in there. I have his acoustic guitar and the keyboard, and that's it. Nothing else is in his monitor because that's all he needs because he can hear the rest from the stage volume just fine. If we go over to the choir monitor, I mean uh, the vocalist monitor, you'll see I'm still on sends on fader. So when I select that, I see I have all four vocals pretty much at the same level right now. So they can kind of work their own blend in the monitors. And then I have some of the acoustic guitar and the, and the piano and uh, keyboard in there so they can get pitch. Okay, so that's that. The drummer wants a few more things. He likes to have Jesse louder than the background vocals, obviously, so he can tell what's going on. He wants a lot of his acoustic guitar so he can catch the rhythm in that. And he needs the keys also. And then he, in addition, would like a little bit of the electric guitars in there so he can kind of feel what's going on with them. Okay, and then also a little bit of his drums and the bass are in there too, just to kind of offset that and make a kind of a big mix for him in his monitor. So you can see how the sends on fader then automatically changes the function of what you're seeing to exactly what you're looking at on that particular monitor send. That's a really fantastic feature for helping you use a digital console in a live situation and be fast at, at, at setting up monitor mixes for your musicians. Really a key thing in this console that I love. Um, okay, uh, one thing we didn't talk about is the master fader. Master fader is just like any other master fader. It's a stereo fader that, that feeds the left and right house. Um, nothing really special about that, <laughs> but there it is. It's on the end here, just past the submasters. Okay. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other features in the console that we could talk about, but you might want to drive into that. Yeah, the one thing I do want to get into is the mute groups. Okay. Mute groups. Uh, muting in general on the whole console can be done in many ways. If I'm looking at the submasters, I can mute the whole band just by hitting those four subs because it gets me the drums, guitars, keys, vocals out. So it's the same as hitting all 16 of these buttons with just hitting those four. Now there's a neater way that I can do it also. I assigned a mute group. Mute group number one will mute the entire band in one hit. Okay, so it's the same as hitting these four submasters, but I can just do it overall here if I want. So like when Chad comes up to speak, if I hit this guy, I know that everybody is muted in the band. If they unplug their guitar or anything like that or turn off the keyboard, nothing is going to come through and affect what's going on with the message. So I like to have that there. I wouldn't necessarily do that right away. I would probably mute like everything but the vocals first 
right and then maybe go back and hit mute on that or I would just do it from here but I have that as a safety valve in case something happens I could always hit that mute right there the second uh, mute group that I've made is for your early bird service I have mute 3 which takes care of the choir mics and the piano okay so just so that I can get at it without having to go to the second page here to do it I could do it from here but I've got it right here so if I muted this is for the band this is for the choir and the piano those are the kind of the two things I have set up for that um, that's mute three mute two I've set up for the effects so this is and those those are the two top ones that I might use so say um, uh, the band is doing a song they finish one of the worship tunes and Jesse's gonna go to speak well I want to be able to instead of diving down into this page and hitting that like that to mute it I can just be up here just with my submasters and if I hit mute 2 it's gonna take care of that for me I'll show you so I'll leave this over here if I hit ah, mute 6 mute 6 is the one mute 6 takes care of all of that for me so I've got these two corners for me that's the easiest to grab so I usually use mute 6 for my effects okay so that'll take all the reverb and the delay out of his vocal mic so if he goes to speak in between songs while the last note is dying out fading out I'll just hit that and then if he goes into the next song you just release it and then it'll be ready to go again for you but it's just a quick way to get the reverb on and off so it doesn't sound amateurish when you're mixing there to have him Go whoa, 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 for a second and then speak normally. Okay, so we talked about the different layers. How do we get to the different layers? Okay, different layers. On the, um, on the channel input side, it's labeled really simply channel 1 through 16. Okay, then the next button goes channels 17 through 32. Okay, that's where you're going to spend the most of your time. And I usually, we set it up so that the majority of your time you're just right on this top layer here. Okay. Now there's the third layer which we're using for all of the line inputs, all the stuff that's coming in from here. So we have the computer on the aux ends, it's just the third layer. The computer, the CD, and the iPod are the main things that you're going to be dealing with here on this one. So um, that's as deep as you'll probably need to go on this side. And again, the majority of the time you're going to be sent on your top layer. The top layer in the submaster group is literally that. It's just all the submasters that we set up. And then beyond that, it, it gets into the monitor sends, which is the lower buses that we have. One, two, and three in this case right now with the ability to go up to five here at the church. And then on the next layer, we have our effects returns here, okay? So that's about as deep as you'll need to go on there. There's even more functionality here, but that's all we're actually utilizing right now here at the church. Speaking of monitors, our worship leader likes to have some reverb in his monitor. How do we get that? Okay. You go over to 